I'm going to show you how to make the most of your time in V Rising by giving you the most optimal way to start the game so that you can tech up and upgrade your gear and complete the starting quests and unlock the recipes as fast as possible on both a PvE or a PvP server. So, uh, what you do is you click play, you click online play, obviously. Now, for the sake of the video, I'm going to go PvE for easy the ease of filming, but I'm going to talk about what you need to do on a PvP and full loot PvP server as well, because a method that will work on a PvE server will not work on full loot PvP, alright? So, when you pick a server, or when you pick an option and you click find servers, it's very important for you to first check the ping, and also, depending on how you want to go about it, if it doesn't say official, and it's usually from G Portal, these servers could completely die because you don't know the owner, you don't know if the owner might have like a, a power trip and ban everybody, or hack in items for his friends. So, me personally, I don't recommend the public servers unless you know the community, okay? So I've selected PvE, and I'm going to click Refresh, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be picking and choosing from PvE servers. I've seen a lot of reviewers who didn't realize this, that they've been joining PvP servers, okay? So I've clicked Refresh, um, and right now it's recommending this server here for 88 ping. I'm checking the ping. That's very important. You don't want to join a server that's far away from you, okay? And uh, you can see that, like, uh, uh, some of these are just locally hosted. Like this guy, Jorinko's Vampiric Dreams, that... That's 100 MS, it's um, only 10 <laughs> players allowed on that server. This is just some dude hosting a server, even though it's his dedicated server. Again, you don't want to play on that one, okay? This one's 54 MS from Kansas City. I think that's a, 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 uni a United State, I guess. Uh, PvE gains? Like Again, you can see detailed settings. Who knows what, what settings that these people have changed, right? So, of course, I want to join an official one. And you can also go up here and change your settings to, to like only dedicated, all right, and stuff like that. But you see now, the list is showing PvP servers, and the skull means full loot, okay? So you, again, if you're a PvE player, don't pick those servers, all right? As for me, I just want to pick a low latency server, and for the sake of the video, PvE, of course, just for the ease of, of uh, recording. I don't recommend long-term playing on a PvE server because they will get boring and stale very quickly, seeing as how it's just some sort of weird co-op thing, okay? So here we go, that's 75 MS. Let's find one that's pretty uh, low ping. All right, now, one thing important to note is when you're making your character, which I just hit randomize, this is not what I'm into, uh, it'll just give you a random character name, and a lot of people don't realize this. So come down here, Change your name to whatever it is you're known for. Okay, I'm so bitch on YouTube, obviously. And then hit create. Your name is invalid. Okay, so no spaces then. And we'll try so bitch UIT. Okay, there we go. And, uh, yeah, just hit create. I don't really care what my character looks like. I'm just going to delete them after the video anyway. Okay? So you're going to start out in the little tutorial zone. Now, if you're on a full loot PvP server, you, you don't get to PvP here in the little tutorial zone. Now, if you want... Go ahead and smash everything around you. Like, you see this jar? Sometimes they have loot in them, okay? There's lumber. Uh, again, if, if you want, th this is kind of honestly a waste of time. I don't really recommend it. Um, and then the game teaches you the controls. You can also smash the candlesticks here. This is going to give you some starting stone. But again, you don't really need this stuff because you can just go out into the world and farm this much faster. But it's up to you what you want to do. Um, also, now, another big thing, too, is go to option. This is the very first thing you want to do. You want to make sure that you have auto run, okay, on a nice hotkey that you like. Um, by the way, this game has push to talk. This is really nice. Uh, voice chat. I love games with voice chat. Um, I don't know exactly where it is on here, but uh, it is called auto run. Uh, yeah, auto run. I have it on the button above tab, which is tilde. So make sure you use that, and then you can use right click to steer your character. This just uh, frees up a lot of your actions per minute for other things. It makes the game much more comfy to play. Uh, so again, just mess around with tr controls. Pick what you want. Click what you like, because once you're out in the world, that's when things get dangerous. On a full loot PvP server, as soon as you leave this... Oh, it's connection issues. Alright, so I'm hosting my own server because uh, a lot of the servers, for some reason, it's a Steam thing, apparently. Uh, there's a lot of connection issues right now. It's the second day of the game, okay? Alright, so your first quest, collect 30 bones. This is simple. Just kill the skeletons. I recommend using magic because it's faster. And there you go, 10 bones. Just do that three times. Pretty simple stuff. 
Nothing too complex about that. Don't worry if you take damage. It's totally fine. Also, remember, you can loot thing, you can loot bones off the ground. This is a chest you can open, and there's some stuff in there. And you can also smash gravestones for more loot, which I actually recommend doing because this is the tutorial zone. You can see 30 stone, much better. These rats are pretty good too for the early game. You can get some stone, though you don't really need that stone. Just smash all the pots and all the gravestones. Get just you want to stock up, okay? On a full loot PvP server, this does not make you a loot pinata. Also, click claim once you've completed the quest and it'll move on to the next quest. And it's going to tell you to craft a sword. You press tab, you click crafting, and then there's your bone sword. That's going to increase your DPS slightly. Also, just note, it's because I'm hosting my own server that I can craft this Great Helm. You won't be able to do this on most servers, so don't worry about that. Now, the way this works is your weapons are your tools, okay? It's kind of like Minecraft. Think of it like that. So, when I open the tab menu, you can see 1 through 9 here. This is, again, it's like Minecraft, okay? Um, so, sword is on my number. I'm going to put it on my number 1 slot. I'm going to take the rat off my hotbar. So, if I want to use the sword, it's already equipped. It's on number 1. If I want to unequip it, I just push 1. And if I want to re-equip it, I just push 1, okay? And you can see now I deal 5 damage. It's a little bit faster than, sh than attacking with my claws. This makes farming slightly easier. And uh, the next quest is, of course, just kill 3 enemies. Pretty simple stuff there. Now, just a few other notes too. Your starting abilities are actually very powerful early on. And make sure you're picking up everything too. So what you want to do is use your space bar to dodge into an enemy and attack. That's going to increase your first hit and give yourself a heal. Whenever you see the enemy do an animation, press C and that activates your counter, which is also a heal. And it also negates the damage. So there we go, second quest completed. Now we gotta craft a bone ring. So we're gonna hit tab, go to craft, and then click that bone ring. It's gonna take 10 seconds, you can close the menu. You'll see right here in the bottom right, we're still crafting that bone ring. Very cool stuff, okay? And uh, while we do that, we can continue to grab stuff off the ground. You see a rat, you just push F to pick it up. So, again, kill the skellies, get the bones. Bones are pretty good early on, okay? So now that we have the bone ring, it automatically equipped. Um, but it won't always. If you craft a new ring later on, it's just going to be dumped in your inventory. And right-clicking it doesn't put it on. you got to, like, left-click, drag it, and drop it. Alright? Now, we're going to hit enemies using Shadow Bolt. That's another quest. That's your spell. That's your R button. By default, there we go. We hit them. Hit the claim but bleh, button. Alright? Smash the gravestones. Get all the stuff. Pick up as much crap as you can. Also, sunlight! Ouch! Uh, that's a game mechanic, by the way. You see here this little map at the top? Uh, this shows you the time of day right now when it's yellow, that means it's sunlight. And if you look at the game world, if you look at the graphics, you'll see that I'm standing in the shade and then this is sunlight. So if you stand in the sunlight, here's what happens. This little ray of light will start touching you. When this ray of light starts touching you for a long time, you'll start taking damage. You'll start taking very rapid damage. So what you have to do is you have to kind of dance in and out of the sunlight. Uh, if, if you need to, okay? And uh, the sunlight will kill you pretty quick. If you die in the tutorial zone, it's fine. Uh, no one can loot your stuff yet. You have, like, an, you have protection for, like, your first hour, okay? Uh, so don't worry too much about that. You're free to stay here and farm all you want. Also, remember, these are containers, so go ahead and feel free to loot them. I just click take all because you're going to want all of this stuff here. Now, the game wants us to craft an armor set. This is how you increase what's called your gear score. You see this little number six next to my name? Uh, whenever you increase your armor's gear score level or the weapon you're using, that increases your level. So when I take my sword off, I'm level 3. When I put my sword on, I am level 6. If I take this ring off because it's gear score level 3, I lose 3 levels. And that is your overall power against enemies in the game, okay? So we're going to hit tab, we're going to start crafting the armor. You can also queue up the armors, so we have the chest guard crafting. I'm going to queue up, it says in queue, we won't have to worry about it. I, I lack animal hides to craft the gloves and boots, so we're going to go ahead and get those in a little bit. Now, it automatically equipped the armor, putting me at level 7. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and continue, just continue killing things, continue using that dodge so you can heal back up. Alright, now another note too is you can actually, you have a healing spell by default, and let me teach you how to use it, okay? Hold left control, and this is your vampire spell menu. You're going to hover over Blood Mend. Don't left or right click, just let go of control while hovering over this. And what this will do is use up your blood here to heal your maximum HP. Now, if you run out of blood, you'll start taking damage and eventually die. Which, in the tutorial zone, it's completely fine. It's, it's alright. Um, but you'll have to fight a living creature and suck its blood, which, don't worry, there's one coming up. It's totally fine. 
Now remember, your spells are very high DPS. Also, that, that what you just saw there, that's an emote menu. You can do like a little bow. Uh, if you want to talk to other people, you can be like, uh, I'm hitting my voice chat button, but it's not working, I guess because there's no one around. Or maybe you just, you're not allowed to voice chat in the tutorial, I think. I don't know. I didn't start hearing people talk until after I got out of the tutorial. All right, so we need to we need to farm animals now. Also, once you reach this gate, this says enter Fairbane Woods. That's it. You're out in the world. So if you want, continue farming in this noob zone right here because you're completely safe. You can't be attacked by other players. If you want, you know, I've got plenty of bones now. I think I've got a good enough resources. I've got lots of bones, lots of rats. Okay, you can eat a rat for some blood too. You, you know, you got many, many, many options here. So I'm going to click uh, Ender Fairbane Woods, and it's, this is very important, okay guys? When it asks you, do you want to start at the west side or the east side? Let me tell you why you want to start at the east side. There are far more starter resources. This area is much better for making a base due to stone golem ac accessibility. The left side has much higher, more dangerous zones. This is like mid-high 30s, okay? This is like very low level stuff, so... Uh, always start on the right side if you can help it because uh, the earlier bosses are more so located here on the right side and that is how you technically progress your characters by killing bosses. Uh, now on a full loop PvP server, some it's it's really it's kind of like suicidal to, to kill the bosses because uh, four mans are going to be camping them like crazy. So you have to kind of sneak in and the, the way it works is you can't be attacked when you're sucking the blood. So what you have to do is wait for the four man to kill the boss run in immediately and start sucking, and you will die. Basically, just throw all your armor into a chest before you do it. But it's still possible to farm bosses on full loot PvP servers when there is cons people contesting it constantly, okay? So at this point, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, at this point, you are pretty much uh, in the world. And once you jump off from this ledge, you cannot come back here until you learn bat form, which is at the end of the game. Alright, so with that said, we're going to jump down, and now we're in the game world. Uh, again, you still have protections for now. You can't be ganked right here. You can't be, uh, you can't be gate camped like in Albion Online, okay? You're, you're completely free to farm safely for your first hour. So here's a wolf. We're going to go ahead and attack the wolf now. And make sure you're using your counter so you can keep your HP up. You can, you can feed on it if you want, okay? When, while feeding, if you left-click, this executes it. But I'm going to go ahead and suck its blood so I get a full blood globe here. And that's going to allow me to, like, heal whenever I want. And when you kill animals, that's how we get animal hide and bones. So now I can craft the gloves and the boots. And that's going to complete our next quest, okay? So this is just a little teleporter. Just walking within the range of it activates it. So we don't have to like click on it or hold the teleporter or anything of the sort because we don't have any other teleporters right now. All right, so we're going to continue north, okay? And right now, we're only level 9. There's a deer. Make sure you kill the deer. This is animal hide, bones. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit more about when you hover over a thing, you see a percentage. You see here where it says a creature 3%. That means... If you suck this creature's blood, you will get a 3% boost to your creature stat. So I have 1% creature, all right, which means I have 3% movement speed. That's it. But if this creature was like a 50%, I would unlock all, all of these perks up to tier 3, so I would receive damage reduction. So if you ever see a, a creature or anything in the world with a high percentage, that means you're going to get a lot of passive buffs. Like this one, wolf, 18%. This one is pretty valuable to suck its blood. It's minorly helpful, so I'm going to go ahead and feed. Now, you're vulnerable for normal enemies, you are vulnerable while feeding, okay? But now that I'm at an 18% blood, and it's not additive, it's just... Like, if I suck the blood of this 3% creature, it goes down to 3%. It does not add 3%, so I'm just going to execute it, which does not count as sucking its blood. So I'm at 18% blood quality, so I, I now move faster than 3%, alright? So go ahead, farm some of these wolves. Just, they're pretty useful. If you get hit, just use your dodge, you can use the heal. If you see them do an animation, you can use your counter, that's another heal. And again, you, if you suck the blood, you can just use blood mint. A lot of people don't know this when they're new. All right, so now we need to craft a bone ax and then chop down some trees. We're gonna go to crafting, we're gonna craft the bone ax, okay? And uh, you can also craft vermin salves. We don't need those right now, but Basically, the game just wants to teach us how to chop trees, so you want to do the quest because this unlocks the next recipes. It's something you kind of have to do. So there we go, we're just going to chop trees, and remember, you can cleave down trees. 
So only one tree that you hit will be your primary, like, hit. The rest are just kind of glancing blows. So there we go. Just chop down the trees. Pretty simple stuff. That's going to give us the bone mace, which is how you farm rocks. Now, we picked up a pine cone, and that's when you have a base, you can grow your own tree. And uh, they're pretty good. So now we have the bone mace. We've got to craft the bone mace. There we go. And that's going to let us farm these stones, okay? Now, on a brand new fresh server, there's going to be a lot of people out doing this. So you're going to have to go a little bit further north to find some resources. So I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, inventory management there. So now we have the mace. You don't have to farm these with the mace, but for the quest, it's just faster to use the mace when you fight stone monsters or uh, whenever you want to harvest stone in general. Now, that was a gemstone uh, rock, so it did drop gems, which so far, they just, they're for decoration. Alright, that's two rocks, and then over here will be rock number three, and that's going to unlock the castle heart, which is, now you're into the real game. This is the base building aspect of it, okay? Now, to build your castle up, okay, you, you do need to have killed creatures, so we see this little deer here. Remember, you can use spells and hunt the creatures that way. Alright, so... I don't want to use my hands, I want to use the sword because it's faster. Okay, there we go. Uh, because again, every creature we kill, we get these little blood essences, and this is very important for building your first castle heart and castle. Now, your castle heart is essentially, if you've played Rust, it's your town center, it's like the core of your base. If an enemy player can access your town center, or your castle heart in this case, then you uh, your base is just going to get completely destroyed, okay? Unlike other games, where a base will just decay over time, if they get to your castle heart, they can destroy everything connected to it immediately. That means all your chests, all your decorations, all your walls gone immediately. So it's very important that you protect it. So the next step is it wants us to construct and interact with the castle heart. So to do that, we're going to get some more lumber first. You're going you're to need a lot of lumber for this, okay? So just go chop some trees for a bit. It's not a big deal. All right. Now, preferably, you want to put your base somewhere close to what you're going to farm next. All right. And in our case, we're going to be farming, well, bosses. Because farming bosses has a couple benefits. It will save us a lot of time later on for a quest that we need that can take possibly hours of your time if you don't do it now. But also, when you kill a boss and suck its blood, it area of effect explodes everything around it, which will break all the trees and all the rocks and all of the lootable containers around it. So just go ahead and remember, on a full loot PvP server, you're immune right now. That first hour, you can't be hit by other players. You're completely safe, completely fine. This game is early access, though. Um, it would be very unfair. Otherwise, like what people would do is they would just come to the starter zone and farm, farm lobies. All right, and then go ahead and grab you some more stone because you're going to need stone. You need lots of stone to expand your borders. And what you want to do is you want to be able to have a 3x3 three three border immediately, and you want to be able to wall it off immediately. And I'm going to show you why, okay? Because um, if you're encountering another player, then they could, they could just go straight to your heart and then click use on it, and then because... You are still in that one hour immunity phase, you can't hurt them, you can't kill them, you can't knock them off your damn wall. And what they'll do is they'll just delete your base and all your resources are basically gone. So <laughs> again, just farm up for a little while and uh, I'm going to show you a nice spot to start out. Now I don't recommend everyone copies, if this video gets tons of views, then every single person <laughs> will end up putting their base in the same spot and it just becomes a clustered heck, okay? Not something you want to do, alright? Uh, so there we go, we're gonna farm some more stone, and I'm gonna cut to an area wherever we can put down a good base and talk about that. Alright, so this is where I recommend you plop down your first little temporary base, okay? So from the start here, we go kind of west and then north to this wolf den. This is the very first boss of the game, and this gives you a very nice early game travel form. So I'm just kind of chilling until it's nighttime because I don't want to step out of the sunlight. But essentially what you're going to do is press B and you're going to access your castle heart. Now you can only put this down in the area with a 3x3. Three three. So, either go clear out some trees in an area that's near this wolf den, um, or just find a nice open spot. So right now there's a bear in the way, and it'll tell you, oh this is a cramped area, there's, you know, crap in the way. So here's the alpha wolf, we don't want to fight him just yet until we get a respawn. Or if you're comfortable with the game and this type of gameplay, you can totally do it, right? But uh, essentially, we're going to find a nice little spot to plop down our base. 
All right, so for the sake of the video, I'm just going to go ahead and plop it down right here. You might have to settle for up top or maybe in this area or up here somewhere or along the lines. It's You may not get it super, super close. I'm going to tell you right now, giant clans that usually do more than four man, they all come here. And, and this is usually a giant compound on PvP servers. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to plop it here to show you how it works. Okay, we're going to pop, pop down... The, uh, the 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 heart and you want to do this you want to make sure there's no actual players around when you do this if there are don't do it do not do not plop this down around players so immediately upon plopping it down you're going to open it and you're going to throw in the blood essence on a PVE server this prevents someone from deleting on a PVP server they have to smash it okay but uh, again you get that small protection immediately 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 all right. Uh, you want to place down three borders, which uh, you're going to need some of those essences back. So I'm going to take half out, and you just want to plop down three borders. So one, two, three. There we go, right? Now, I like to go further and do nine. There we go. So we have a little three by three there. Hit claim, and that's going to unlock walls. you got to do this very quickly. So you're going to immediately wall off. You're just going to immediately wall off your blood heart. Don't worry about it. We can add doors later. This is very essential. Now your blood heart is protected, okay? And then from here, um, you can add uh, whatever you want. What I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, do I have enough resources here? Um, I believe I do. I, yeah, I've got more than enough to, to completely wall this off. So there we go. And uh, I'm going to have to actually clear out a little bit of this stuff here. But um, essentially, now I'm mostly protected, okay? Uh, and what I want to do is I do want to add... A doorway there we go we get the resources back there uh, and then as far as the walls go there we go all set and uh, blocked by palisade pillar that would be this little stone thing here we just gotta smash that out of the way uh, but essentially this is your this is your absolute little starter base this is not something you're gonna keep this is just a respawn and a quick stash point because bigger clans will eventually smash this down and grab everything inside. But we will have progressed our character so it doesn't really matter. Okay, I just gotta clear this out so that I can show you what I mean. Now, what you also wanna do is you wanna airlock it too. Otherwise, people can access your base and all your crap very easily. So I'll show you what that is for those that have never played Rust, okay? So, from the get-go, we're gonna also put down our respawn point. This is very important because if you step outside... And I'm just going to do this for bug purposes, just sleep in it. That way it perms our character there. Alright, and then also, uh, whenever you can, build yourself a small stash. I didn't harvest enough lumber, but we'll do that later. Okay, so we're going to open and close this. And uh, what you want to do is when build, you'll have to actually like expand your border just like that. And you're going to put one more set of walls outside your front door and then add another door. Because what will happen is, like say I'm running from someone... Without an airlock, I'm going to open the door, run inside, they're going to stun me, they're going to run inside and break all my stuff, which is bad, okay? Um, so, you don't want that to happen. What you want to do is create an airlock, and we're just going to fight the wolf while chopping the tree here. It's not a big deal. Wolf takes damage. <laughs> and uh, go ahead and cut this tree down, grab the animal hide while we chop. Pretty simple stuff. So, again, let me show you what an airlock is. I'm sorry I don't have this all pre-planned or edited or whatever, but that's the style of my channel. I like to be real with you. It's me and you sitting on the couch gaming together. That's just how it is, man. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put the wall, wall, doorway, up front, add door there, and we just have to add... Oh, we don't have the lumber. So, again, i got to chop another tree. But this is what it essentially looks like. Just pretend that there is a wall on the left and right side here. And uh, you get the idea. And let me show you how this would work in case you have an enemy player at your doorway. Okay, uh, let's see. Can I do this yet? There's one wall, and then I need one more tree. Now, I do have a, a, a tip on my channel how to use stone golems to do this step much, much faster. But I believe right now it's far more important to use your first hour of immunity to get your movement skill ability, which is wolf form. So this is why we're making a base near the wolf den, okay? It's very important. If you have multiple people with you, if you're not playing by yourself, then you can you can just straight up kill the wolf pretty simple and very safely. Alright, so here's what an airlock does. 
I'm gonna run into my base. Oh no, I'm being attacked. Ah, da, 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 da. Shut the door. Okay, now the enemies are in here with me. Blah, 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 blah. They kill me, right? They're stuck in here. They can't open the doors. And depending on the, the gear of the door and their gear, they can't smash down the door. All right? This allows me to delete a wall and go out another side of the base or just add a different doorway if I want to leave. Okay, depending on the server settings. And uh, basically, they have to, if they can't smash their way out due to lack of gear, they have to die. And then I get all their stuff. But this is just a very nice way to guard your base. So what do you do after you have your base nice and set up? You just go to the build menu, you hold spacebar to dismantle, or you can click the doorway here, and that'll change it to the doorway, add a door. This will let you access your castle heart if you want to give it some more blood juice here. Um, and that way it'll last longer, obviously, okay? So right now we've got 10 hours worth of blood in there. And uh, I do recommend that you make a small stash and put your gear and everything you've harvested in it so far. Because if I go to the wolf now and die, another player can pick up all my stuff and all of that farming goes to waste. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Alright, so with everything stored in a stash here, we are now all set to go farm that wolf. Now, in the, right now the quest is having us build the sawmill and build the workbench. We're going to do that later. We're going to do that in a, in a better spot. Okay, for now, our goal is to get a movement skill ability from this wolf den because we also need to farm the wolf every time it's up for its uh, for its hearts, which is very important for, for later. So I'm going to go to the wolf den now and take it out. I'm only level gear score 10. It's level 16, but don't worry. You can, you can take it. All right, there's the wolf. I have a full thing of blood. I have warrior blood for more physical damage. And we want to basically cast our spells every time they're up and dodge attacks. Uh, again, this guy does hurt because we have just the bare minimum gear to take him on. And anytime he does a little animation, just use your counter, it's fine. Use your dodge, use your spells when they're up. He's gonna summon some adds, which is what wolves tend to do, I guess, in games like this. Again, we're just we're just sidestepping, we're dodging, we're using our counter, even though I'm not doing it super proper. It's fine. Okay, we got him down to half. All right, just taking him out. Using that counter for his adds, that keeps us healed. Using our dodge, just make sure you hit something when you use that dodge. Using our spells, you could range him if you want, if you're not, uh, you know, very confident. Also, if you get the wolves down, just use your execute on him like so. And there you go, just take it patiently, we're fine, we're completely fine. Just use your counter, that's gonna heal you, that's gonna hurt, hurt him too. And now we're just trading blows here, using the dodge, that way we can keep healed. Again, you get all, you get everything that you need at the start of the game here. There we go, and and down he goes. And look at our HP, it's mostly full. If not, you can run away a bit and heal. So once you beat the boss, you're gonna hold F and extract blood. The cool thing is, is on a full loot PvP server, this makes you completely immune. You cannot be hurt by the sun or other players while this happens. You are completely immune. So if someone kills a boss, run up and start sucking on it. If they suck it first, even right before they kill the boss, you can still get credit for it and get the ability. So what this does is we can turn into a wolf now. This is super important for the early, early game because this is a 45% speed increase. This also makes it where you don't aggro other wolves anymore. And this, this makes farming wolves much easier as well. But what this does, this lets you get around the world very quickly. This lets you run in between shaded areas when it's daytime. Basically, you want to get this as soon as possible. And um, from here, the next thing you can do is continue your questing. So we need to make a sawmill, a simple workbench, and all of that fun stuff. Um, or, if you want, it really depends. On a full loot PvP server, I wouldn't do this. But if you want... You, we can go right now using our wolf form and go get us a horse. If you want, you don't have to. Um, it's mostly just for getting around faster. But you can see in wolf form, I can just run through camps. I can just run by like this wolf. He won't. He, he's friendly. He doesn't care. He, he won't attack me. Okay, now the sun is attacking me. But hey, we're in wolf form. We can dart in between the shade very, very quickly. You absolutely must get this in the early game. I highly recommend it. By the way, if you want easy resources, find one of these stone golems and um, preferably not get hit in the, in the early day. But uh, use your wolf form and kite it around to some trees and when it does its big stomp attack, which is that attack there, that's going to knock down all the resources for you. Now beware, during the day, it's kind of dangerous because it does, you know, <laughs> trees block the sun, so without trees you might burn up. But you can use stone golems to get some very quick and easy early resources. Highly recommended, uh, though, because we are low leveled. And oh no, the sun! Ah. 
<laughs> because we are low level, this golem can hit us very, very hard. So don't spend too much time on it, especially if you're away from base or on a full loot PvP server. Because if PvPers see you doing this, they're going to think that you're an easy prey because they think you're fighting the golem and they'll just come and help the golem kill you. All right. So with all of that said, we're, we're going to go north now, up here to tier 2. That's right. As soon as we get wolf form, we're going into a tier 2 zone because this is going to dramatically increase your gathering and mobility potential. Now, I know we just got a mobility spell, but we're going to use it to get basically a, a mount, a horse. On a full loot PvP server, this allows you to escape from most zones and travel around safely. Think of it like Albion Online. If you go out gathering and you're without a mount, you're basically dead, okay? You're, you're basically dead. But when you have a horse and you see another player approaching, you just mount up on your horse and ride away, and there's nothing they can really do. Even if they have this wolf form, which they're going to have on a PvP server, they won't be able to catch you. That's why we get the horse. It's I recommend getting the horse to everyone. All right, so I'm going to show you how to get the horse here in just a sec. All right, so I'm going to show you in the map where I'm at. Now, here's the start of the game. We traveled all the way north up here. Make sure that you get this vampire way again in case you die. Because uh, this is a tier 2 zone, all the enemies here will be able to very quickly kill you. But because we have this nice little wolf form, we are going to be able to be hyper mobile. And um, I also don't recommend doing this during the day. That just increases the difficulty, alright? Uh, when you do this at night, it's going to be way easier to just jump on a horse and escape. And you're going to ride around this north zone, and you're going to look for these little icons um, that says horse on it. So Daybreak Village we see that there's a horse icon, which means somewhere in there, there's just horses. And all you gotta do is jump on them and ride them out. Because we're a vampire, horses trust us or whatever. But again, very dangerous. So we're basically in a village now. And you want to kind of dodge and weave. Not being burned by the sun and shot by crossbows. But there is a horse. We're going to just run to it, hold F to mount it. And there we go, hit spacebar to gallop quickly. It's nighttime, we're no longer going to be burnt by the sun. And now, piloting the horse is a little weird, especially because I'm being shot at, right? But we're just going to run out of the village. And, um, you know, there are different quality horses. This one is a, a very nice one. 10.5 max speed, anything over 10 speed, very, very cool to have. So, uh, piloting the horse, again, it's very awkward with the control scheme. But I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way. And I don't know why this isn't the default way, okay? Um, so, I'm just looking at the map to escape. We're going to ride this back to our base now. You're going to use your auto run key. Push your auto run key. So we're auto running. And then hold, well, hit space so it runs faster. Hold right click. That's it. This will just, this will go in forward in the direction that you're controlling. This makes turning super quick. Look how easy this is. You will be able to ride around. Also, you deal more damage whenever you're mounted and you do a mounted attack. This makes early game farming very fast, and because you have a mount now, uh, this makes it very hard for you to kill in PvP. Again, come up here, first thing, go get you a horse, maybe get a few horses if you want, and uh, put them in your base. You know, you can grab items very quickly, like say, someone, say other players are farming these guys. You can ride up, smack them right away, like here, here's some dudes fighting, these aren't real people though. And um, I accidentally tried to feast on them, so don't do that. Also, enemy players and and mobs can kill your mount, so it's not recommended, okay? I, again, I didn't mean to dismount to feed on a target, but if you want, that's another way too, is if on a full loot PvP server, if you want, just, ride your, just suicide your mount right into the boss as they kill it and feast on it, and that will unlock its abilities. Alright, so with that said, we can now ride this back to our base, and I like to make a base up here too. You can also use your mount to unlock these vampire way gates, which is what I'm going to do, because we need a boss in here later. So I'm going to go ahead and run and grab this way gate. I'll be right back. By the way, real quick, so you don't lose your horse. Now, when you park it in your base, it's pretty much there. Don't park it near the walls. If you park your horse near the walls, enemies can attack through the wall and kill your horse. So be careful with that, alright? And like... Even then, if a guy stood here in this corner with a spear, he could probably kill this horse. So I would park it just to be safe, maybe in here with your castle heart, if you want. Now, let me talk about caring for your horse real quick, okay? Just standing near your, near your horse, press tab, and that's going to open the horse menu. All you need are these little water-filled canteens, which you get from killing mobs, 
You throw it on the horse and that extends its life, okay? After 13 hours, if I don't give it more water, it's going to die. Uh, it's that simple. Now, I want to point out real quick without using giant mobs to farm for you, these like half broken stone walls are the quickest way to get stone. And if you're on a fresh wipe server, uh, expect people to come here because you also get stone brick from them, by the way. Expect entire clans to go to all these little plateaus around the world and smash all of these stones the very first thing because this dramatically speeds up how fast they can start building stone wall castles. Alright, but with that said, there is another way to, to farm just as fast and that's using the giant stone golems. And I have a video on my channel that explains how to do that. And that video looks just like this. You can go to my channel and uh, watch this video. This will teach you how to use a giant stone golem to basically instantly farm AOE mass resources for you. Super quick and easy. Very useful in a full loot PvP server. Alright, real quick, I want to talk about rushing tier 2 castle walls. The fastest way for mostly a solo player, this doesn't really apply to four mans, but if four mans also spread around the map and did this, it'd be way faster. Find yourself a stone golem. And use this to farm resources, okay? Now, I've made a whole video about this, but essentially, you use the stone golem and you kite it, preferably in wolf form, near some resources. Wait for it to do a stomp attack, okay? That's a ground pound. That's the stomp. That's going to AoE and break all the resources around it, allowing for an extremely fast, efficient farm. Now, if you are on a PvE server, feel free to build your base near one of these guys, because they can't break the walls. However, if you're on a PvP or full loot PvP server, make sure that you only build your base just outside of the golem's leash range, okay? Because the golem will basically act as a siege golem and smash your base down if another player kites it near your doors, which means they can raid your base with no explosives very early on, and that's not what you want to do. That's not what you want to have happen, okay? But essentially, if you want to have a very early lead in resource gain without having to manually chop down trees, this is the way to do it, okay? And uh, just go ahead and farm up as much wood and stone as you can so that you can continue with the next quests. That will make things incredibly fast and easy for you, alright? Alright, and just in one single night time frame of farming, I want to show you how much I got. Also, I like to mark the map when I find a stone golem, and by the way, don't ever kill these. They only give you 450 stone for killing them, and then they never respawn ever again. So, uh, do not, do not kill these. Uh, they are so useful for farming. You can see that I completely leveled this entire forest. And look at all my resources. I have, like, let's just sort it real quick. Look, look, look at all the wood and the stone. And this is at the very start of the game. This would take so long to farm if with your starter tools. It's insane. So, using the golem method, I'm very easily able to afford two bases, all right? If I ever need blood orbs, I just go to this bandit camp or just kill any little deers or creatures around. If I need resources, there's a golem right there. These trees and stone will grow back over time. This base is for hunting bosses. There's a boss here, here, here. here. There's like four or five, six bosses. There's also something I got to do mid game up here. So this base is just nice to have. Um, you can also build the base up here if you want. Um, this base here is, again, this is just for resource collection and to farm this boss uh, and pretty much just progress our questing. So in full loot PvP, you will start losing bases, but if you have at least two bases up, then it's not that big of a deal because um, the the thing is your resource base, because we're near this golem, we're going to be able to very quickly turn this into tier two. And it's really, really hard to raid unless they already have gunpowder, which or sulfur, which they won't for quite a while. Alright, so the faster you beat through these quests, the faster you can reach tier 2, and if you get foundation wiped by a big clan or guild or get offline, it's completely fine as long as you've beaten these quests. So first thing I've done is I've sat down a Mist Brazier because it is daytime, and without this thing, you're going to be dodging the sunlight because you don't have a roof yet. I know it's weird, but these are just walls, okay? Uh, so with that, let's get the questing out of the way. It wants us to make a sawmill or go to production. We're going to put down a sawmill, and you don't have to be too precise with it. Now, the thing is, I don't recommend putting stuff near the walls, but because this is a cliff, in, people can't get on this side to attack through the wall, okay? They can get right here to attack through the wall, but it's just a sawmill. It's really cheap and easy to repair, uh, so not a big deal. With the sawmill, uh, all you gotta do is put one stack of wood, hit, click this compulsive count, that's gonna put all your wood in there. And I'm gonna keep just a, just a stack for myself. 
With that done, now it wants us to make a workbench, which we will need planks for, so we just have to wait until uh, we get some planks, and if you want, you can make multiple sawmills right now, and uh, the cool thing too is is that you can, you can technically refund these if you want. You just go to your build menu, you highlight it, and right now I can 100% refund this sawmill. So if you want to really accelerate, drop multiple sawmills, okay? And then just make, you know, th this is just a little speedrun strats, okay? You, you drop multiple sawmills, okay? You throw some stuff in there, and uh, <laughs> you just refund it whenever you're done making uh, your planks that you need for the quest, okay? So we can go ahead and do that right now if we want, you know, just make it nice and simple, right? There we go, throw some more wood in there, and now we have three sawmills going, and we only need, for the workbench, we're going to go to crafting, and we just need eight planks, the three sawmills going that we're going to 100% refund. Pretty cool stuff, okay? So we got three there, we just need eight planks. Uh, that's going to be one plank, that's four. And that's five, six... And uh, again, th this is just speedrun strats. If you wanna, if you're really trying to get a base up quickly, there's number seven. Okay, and then this one will be number eight. I'm gonna go ahead and just yoink all the resources out of here so I can, you know, refund it, right? And open that build menu. 100% dismantle refund. Very cool stuff. Go ahead, yoink those out. Same deal. 100% refunded. And you know, I want to keep a sawmill, so obviously. Um, I'm going to keep this one just going for general purposes, and then we can make the simple workbench, which we can go ahead and put right there, and uh, there we go. Uh, now we need to increase our gear score level, so we're going to open the workbench, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to make these reinforced um, weapons. Okay, you also get a spear now. This is great for hunting animals. This is also really high DPS early on. If you're fighting other players, or you're fighting just humanoids, this is better than the sword, okay? But once we unlock Copper Sword, the sword gets an ability which makes it the top DPS. So you still want to make all these. Then also, because uh, we have Animal Hide, we're going to go ahead and craft all of these. That's going to increase our gear score level some more, making bosses much easier. And then once we kill a certain boss, we will unlock a tannery, which is really easy to get. Uh, we do want the weapon upgrades, though. Uh, we also need some plant fiber and more blood roses for the ring, and that's going to increase our gear score some more. We can go ahead and make the Night Stalker vest once we unlock the tannery. I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, and now it now here's the thing with the crafting bench. It puts it down here, so just right-click it. That's going to automatically put it on our, on our character. And uh, we just need that ring upgrade now. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get some plant fiber. Those are everywhere. The blood roses, you'll see them glowing red on the map. Or not on the map, but just in the world. Very easy to get. I'll be right back. Actually, I just crafted a sword to skip it. So we're going to go ahead and hit claim. That's going to give us the blood altar. Now, you don't really have to make this thing right away. Okay, you can. It, it just helps. You can also just open a website and use a map tool to figure out where bosses and stuff are. Um, and all my blood is currently in the, uh, what is it, the, <laughs> uh, this thing here. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and quick, well, that's the wrong button, I'm gonna go ahead and quick sell. Only 75% refund. We're gonna take just a little bit of blood out here, and, uh, well, actually I only have three left, so I'm gonna go get some blood. By the way, I wanna mention when you loot chests, make sure you take everything. Don't leave a single item in the chest. Unless you want to, like, grief someone's base, because if you leave a single item in a chest, it won't respawn. So make sure you take everything. Also, when you're in these little camps, just break the boxes, because they have loot in them. Alright? There's stuff in here that you want to pick up. It's just, uh, it's free loot, so don't, don't pass it up. Alright, so now we're going to make the Blood Altar, which is, uh, this just lets you track bosses and kind of give you more info of what's going on. So... When you interact with the Blood Altar, you can uh, you can see the name of bosses and the level. You can see uh, uh, there's Keely the Frost Archer. This person unlocks the Tannery, so we definitely want to hit Track Blood. And what that's going to do is it's going to make a big red blood line just occasionally appear around your character, pointing you in the direction of the character. So I already know where this boss is. This boss is actually right there. And you can see that's exactly where this blood line is pointing to. Uh, and again, you don't really need this other than to just kind of track bosses, but you can use a, a website for that if you want. Alright, it's pretty simple. The next thing it unlocks is the research desk, which is uh, not super important right now. I'm going to go ahead and build it because that's what the quest wants me to do, and we have plenty of planks to do so. So, essentially, this is how you're going to tech up into Tier 2, 
and you're going to have to do it by collecting lots of paper. Alright, so I found this assortment of fine paintings book. By killing mobs and raiding bases, you can unlock this manually, alright? Now, to unlock the higher level weapons and armor, you have to go to the level 30 zones. I have not seen these drop anything lower than the level 30 areas, which are to the, mostly to the middle and the left side of the map. That's why we don't go there at the start. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and unlock that, because I had the book for it, uh, which is just paintings. I don't really care about decorations. They don't do anything. But essentially, that's all this research desk is. Alright, now the quest wants us to unlock, uh, upgrade the castle heart. Now, at this step in time... I don't recommend upgrading the castle heart immediately, preferably because um, you don't really have the resources yet. Um, first off, we gotta go kill that boss to be able to tan hides for leather, so we can't even do that yet until we go and kill that boss. And in order to be geared enough to kill that boss, we want our ring upgraded, we got our armor upgraded, we want our weapon upgraded. I'm good enough right now to go kill that boss, which is, according to the Blood Altar, level 20. And I'm technically, you know, gear score 17, so it's not a big deal. However, this camp does have a lot of enemies in it, and if you're on a full loot PvP server, if because she's a frost archer, if she hits you with a frost arrow, players are just going to come kill you, because you'll be frozen for like 3 to, three to 4 seconds. They're just going to be able to free freely wail on you and take all your loot. So you either want to ride in, in wolf form, when someone else is doing it and just steal the kill completely just like take off all your gear store it all on your base run there naked and then have someone else do it that's the easiest way in a full loot pvp server on a pve server you could just go do it right now if you want and for those that don't know the uh vampire lockbox you're limited to one per base um so what this does is if you get foundation wiped this is like an ender chest from minecraft okay everything you put in here the enemy can't steal so, the most important thing that you want to store in here is paper, because without paper, you don't get to go to tier 2. So, paper absolutely goes in there. Stone bricks, tier 2 material. I like to put planks in there as well. Blood roses, not super important. These sapphire stones. Blood essence, you can put that in there if you don't want to get completely foundation wiped. Um, you know, you can put some basic materials like, like a stack of stone and a stack of wood in there too. Uh, but right now, nothing super important. Uh, I generally just use the benches as a means to store. So what I mean by that is for the sawmill, that's where I would store all my wood and my planks. Uh, the mist brazier is where I would store my bones for now until I get vermin set up later. Once I get grinders, that's where the stone goes, and so on and so forth. And e to make organization easier, whenever you make a chest, just put the chest next to the resource. So once this fills up with wood, put a chest next to the sawmill, that's where all your wood will go, right? And so on and so forth. Simple as. Real quick, I want to mention a bug with the Mist Brazier for PvE servers. If you have this outside of your base, or near an open window, or an open wall, or whatever, other players can open your Mist Brazier and take all your bones. So, uh, don't leave bones in a Mist Brazier if you don't have it completely walled off on a PvE server. On a PvP server, they can of course take it, they can also open chests, but they can just smash it and take it as well. Alright, so make sure that when you're fighting the boss, that you've cleared out the camp before you engage the boss, because having a bunch of adds is very detrimental to killing it. Try to not fight the boss during the daytime, obviously, because, you know, we are a vampire. And, uh, kite it to an area where you're- well, there's lots of shade if you're gonna be fighting in the daytime. Now, for this particular boss, just let them do their attack animation, and then, uh, just trade with them. You don't have to use counters if you don't want to, but you can. It does make things a little easier, you can see that I'm now eating sunlight. Lots and lots of sunlight, so we're gonna run inside, and I didn't clear this ad apparently, so... Again, it's just more of a hassle. Make sure that you have plenty of blood pulled, uh, saved up as well, in case you need to retreat and heal. But if you retreat too far, the boss will leash, and they will restore their HP. So, uh, again, fighting an archer in the indoors here, kinda easy until she does some AoE attacks. Um, but, you know, she's mostly dead, we could trade blows with her at this point. Always be using your dodge because it's basically a life leech. I failed to do that properly there, but also your counter is a heal, and your spells are a very high DPS. So I'm just going to run out outdoors, let her arrows... I don't know how her arrows work indoors, but it's whatever. You can also line of sight her because she is an archer, so I can just hide behind the corner, let her shoot, and then so on and so forth. It's a very easy boss once you've gotten the basic controls of the game down. Alright, now if you... If you end up killing her and she's in stealth, you have to wait for her to unstealth. Also, do note, whenever you execute any boss like this, they will 
uh, explode everything around them, which could uncover lots of loot. So in this case, there's really nothing to loot. But uh, there you go. Now, here's a, a very important drop that this boss did, uh, dropped, is the Unsullied Heart. The best way to farm these hearts is to kill the bosses. So you're going to want to kill her over and over and over again, along with the Alpha Wolf and any other bosses you come across. Always be farming them, because you're going to need four of these uh, to advance your quest later on, and they're very time-consuming and hard to get. So it's very lucky that we got one of these. Do not eat it. Do not waste it. Hopefully, don't let someone raid your base and take this, because these are super duper important. Now, by beating that Frost Archer, we unlocked Frost Bat. It's a good PvP spell. It's not that good for PvE, so don't bother using it for that. Your, uh, your Blood Bolt's just as good, low cooldowns. Uh, but we did unlock the Tannery, so go ahead and build your, yourself a Tannery, and uh, just place it wherever. Which, uh, it's a little weird, awkward, doesn't like to be placed in certain spots, but... There we go, we have a tannery, and just throw all of your hide into it, your animal hide, and that's going to get you leather. This is how you advance your blood heart to tier 2, and this is how you uh, craft of the next tier of your armor set, which is the Night Stalker Vests. Now, Coarse Thread, you're going to get in that exact town we just raided, which is right up here. You can see when I hover over this area, it has Coarse Thread as one of its resources. Or if I raid over here, there's also Coarse Thread. If I raid down here, there is no coarse thread, so you want to go to like one of these areas that says it has coarse thread. Alright, and that's how you're going to advance your gear score to the next level. Now, while you're out farming paper and coarse thread and leather, you also might come across these little orange rocks. These are copper ores. You want to farm these when you see them. If you're on a PvE server, you can just go to a copper mine and farm as much as you want there very easily. However, if you're on a PvP or full loot PvP server, that place is mostly going to be always controlled by big guilds. So you won't have access to that unless you somehow, you know, are on a noob server or maybe some sort of PvP solo server. But most of the time, there's like 20 to 30 people there just, just guarding it. They won't let you in. They're not going to let you <laughs> farm there. So, uh, <laughs> again... Uh, you'll have to farm these individual stones instead, which can be kind of annoying, but this is a very important resource to leveling up your gear even further to copper, which when you hit the copper age for weapons, your DPS will skyrocket, allowing you to kill and farm bosses and farm areas much faster. So it's very important for you to hit copper as fast as possible, but you will need a smelter for that. And I'm going to talk more about that in a little while. Alright, so we did a bandit camp raid. I put all the leather in the tannery that I have gotten. Uh, I've also used the leather that I got just from the bandit camp because you can find regular, already refined leather. Brewed in the workbench, I've crafted my new set of armor and a traveler's wrap, which uh, d does take cloth, and you get that again from the bandit camps. So we're just going to slap all that on, and now we have some sun resistance, and uh, you'll notice that we it did not take my plated bone guard chest guard to craft. So what this does now is I have a replacement armor set. So I'm going to go ahead and slap these on. That's going to increase my gear score. I'm now gear score 25, which means we can go kill more bosses. And let me recommend one right here for you. All right, uh, where is she at? The Chaos Archer, okay? This, this will dramatically increase your spell damage because right now we shoot one Shadow Bolt for 200%. Well... Lydia the Chaos Archer gives you two bolts for 125%, which is a 250% magic damage overall, and it's a damage over time spell. So, realistically, you're dealing 300% magic damage if you consider the damage over time. You also get the Devourer, which is a way to salvage old gear, which you could salvage your old armor if you want. It's completely fine. You would just get back some bones and, and hide. However, you can save your armor set later when you have servants in your castle, all right? And uh, it's up to you, however you want to do it. But essentially, also, now it's time to plop down a furnace, which, uh, do I? I guess I don't have enough stone for a furnace. I will need to farm a little bit more stone. Uh, but we're going to put down the furnace and the copper that we got from the copper ore we got from bandit camps and farming the copper nodes. We're going to turn that into copper ingots which in turn will take the copper ingots and the the leather and upgrade our castle heart to tier two and that's going to allow us to then have stone or um, yeah stone walls and flooring and make the base pretty much unrateable until other players have explosives and sulfur 
Now, a lot of people want to rush into Tier 2 for the Castle Heart, but I disagree. I believe that you should first craft a Copper Sword and a Copper Mace, because the Copper Mace is extremely useful for not only farming Copper faster, but it is a move. It, ha it has a movement skill, high DPS PvP ability that basically is a leap attack and an AoE attack. It's very, very valuable. These are the two major upgrades that I would recommend that everyone get in both PvE and PvP servers because uh, it is just that darn good. Now, the thing with the Copper Sword is it is the highest DPS weapon. The Copper Axe does not really increase uh, tree chopping all that much. The Spear, it has a cool attack, but it's not as high DPS as the Copper Sword, so there's just no reason to use it. Also, Instead of salvaging your sword, you should save it for when you have servants for your castle so they can be better armed. Again, get mace and get sword before you upgrade your castle to tier 2, but you'll also want to have a grinder ready with stone bricks as soon as you hit tier 2. Now, to make a grinder, you'll need whetstones, but whetstones are pretty rare. Um, you can find them in camps that don't say they can give whetstones, like this bandit trapper camp. That's where I found one of them, but it's very rare. You want to go to, like, an encampment that specifically advertises it has whetstones, which is, well, right over here, very close. So we're going to go there, and we're going to farm at least three more whetstones so that we can craft the grinder, which is under refinement, and then you go to grinder. So we need four whetstones. We have the copper ingots and the blanks. Easy mode. Once you have that grinder going, that's when we'll tech up to tier two and build a castle. Now, also, while you're out farming, make sure you use your now your new copper mace to hit these bright yellow stones, which is sulfur. Sulfur is used to raid enemy bases in PvP, but it's also used to advance to tier 2. It's used to get to a level 37 boss who has a camp that is completely walled off, and the only way in is through explosives. Also, having explosives allows you to farm copper extremely efficiently and fast, which we'll get into possibly later in this video. Now, to further increase your DPS, you want to take out Lydia the Chaos Archer. This will give you a much superior spell than Blood Bolt, and this is extremely useful in PvP as well. If you meet someone at the very start of a server that has the gear that I have and her spell, you basically can just kill everybody and loot their gear, and it's going to propel you so much faster. Again, that's only on a PvP server. Even for PvE reasons, just having her spell makes clearing bosses and mobs and farming that much faster. It's a very low cooldown, high DPS spell, especially early on. And she's pretty easy too. She uh, she doesn't hurt that much. Uh, she's pretty squishy, and uh, even if you tank her abilities, you're not really going to take that much damage. One of the easier fights in the game, honestly. Because again, these archers, once they commit to an attack, they're basically forced to shoot in that direction. And her AoEs, again, barely... They just tickle. They're, they're not a threat. This boss is very undertuned. And you gotta kill these bosses anyway for those blood hearts. Unless you have a group of people to help uh, kill the Vampire Slayer, which... Um, <laughs> that's the only faster way to advance, and we're gonna get into that a little bit later. So as soon as you kill her, press J, open up your menu, go to Chaos and put on Chaos Volley over your Shadow Bolt. That is going to massively, massively increase your damage. Here's what the spell looks like. All right, you shoot two of these, they, they deal damage over time. They deal very good damage. Even if you miss the first shot, that second one's going to hit. And uh, when both of those hit, it deals more damage than your regular Blood Bolt. By the way, you might be finding silver at some point in the game. These little silver coins are possibly even silver ore. Don't, don't pick these up. You can't even spin these until you're, like, deep into Tier 2. And, uh, honestly, the, the silver is, it's just not worth it. The thing is, when you pick up silver as a vampire, it hurts you. And when you're being hurt, you can't transform into a wolf, which makes you vulnerable to be killed in PvP. It makes you travel slower. It's just not worth getting right now. Don't worry about it. Once you unlock human form and vendors, then you by all means go and go ahead and, and and farm some silver and so you can trade with the humans, all right? It, but right now you won't be able to use it for quite some time. It's not that important to get, so don't worry about it. Once you farm wet stones, go ahead and plop down, which my UI is not working, a grinder. I, prefer, I recommend two grinders because these things are kind of slow. Uh, unfortunately, I only had enough resources for one grinder. As soon as you get that grinder down, throw your stone in it and just get to cranking because you're going to need a lot of bricks. However, I'm going to show you a method to save resources on defending your first initial castle 
by just simply fortifying the front door and giving no one else access to that front door. However, uh, if you are on a very advanced server, like say two to three days in, there's going to be sweaty tryhards who will have unlocked bat form, and what that means is they can just fly into your palisade base as a bat and then just destroy everything anyway. So, uh, the uh, the front door defense method only works on a fresh brand new server where no one has bat form yet, because uh, <laughs> otherwise they can just fly in. You'll have to uh, move all your valuables in your treasure room and make those technically castle rooms so people can't just fly in and take everything. Alright, now we can upgrade our castle hearts. We're going to uh, click upgrade, and there we go. Now it is tier 2, and what that's going to do is allow us to have a much larger border, and then later we'll get into what servant coffins are. Those are very important. But the very first thing now that we are tier 2, well, first off, we're going to click claim so that we can unlock um, uh, the castle room things, is we're going to expand our border to the choke points. So I've already kind of started on that, but because you only get 30, it's a little bit hard to do. We're going to go to Fundamentals and Border. I'm just beelining it here to the choke point. Because right now, your main concern is keeping people out. Alright? So what we're going to do now is, because this is the only way in, we're going to build a castle wall and a castle door right here at this choke point. And then, on our other side of our base, we're going to do the same exact thing. Alright? Now, the reason why we expand the border is so that someone else can't basically border block. And what that is, is where they plan to raid your base, but because you don't have borders placed, they can build two tiles away from your base, plop down a heart, and then claim the border outside of your actual base, allow it, making it where you can't block your choke point. So there we go, we're now border... The borders are set down, other players can't come in and lay down a heart and claim. All right, and then the first thing we're going to do is castle wall and castle door, this section and the other section. And that's going to keep us safe for at least the first few days until someone, again, unlocks the bat form. All right, so now we're going to do the quest to build a castle. So we're going to set down the flooring right here. Then we're going to go to walls. We're going to make a reinforced entrance. There we go. Add the doorway. And then we're going to do this again right there. Add the doorway. And then we're going to add more walls. We're going to go back to the reinforced walls and walls right there. Now, this says it's being blocked, but it's not. And there we go. We've now completed that quest and basically made a very strong airlock for our entrance. Now, here's the thing. If you're an enemy player, you can't get around this, okay? It's blocked. You can't jump over it. You can jump down, but you can't jump up. So, basically, if they want to raid this base now... and and this is kind of a bad example, because on a full loot PvP server, you would just grab the golem here, and you would lure him to the door, and just he will eventually be able to smash that door in. But um, that's why you don't build a base near the golems. Or you can always kill the golem at this... Like, I can just straight up kill that golem now. I don't really need him anymore. Uh, and he will not respawn. So uh, there we go. We have completed our castle wall, and that's going to unlock the stone coffin, which is a little bit harder to create, but this is essentially a secondary spawn point, all right? So, uh, you go to Fundamentals, and uh, here it is. Now, this thing costs Grave Dust, in which a lot of people have huge trouble with this, but we are so powerful that it's actually pretty easy to get. All we have to do is travel right about here, at the Forgotten Cemetery. We're going to get Grave Dust and Morning Lily, but not only are we going to get Grave Dust and Morning L Lily for the Stone Coffin, which, again, acts as a secondary spawn point. So, if I want now... This first base I have with the horse that's still over here, I can make this our wooden coffin spawn point. Then I can um, go over here and make this the stone coffin spawn point, and I can just basically choose between two different bases. Or, if you want to hide like a secondary base nearby in case you're being raided to counter raid, there's so many different playable options with having two coffins available to you. Okay, It's not like Rust where you can just put down like 10 bedrolls and spawn all, all over the map. You can only have one wood and one stone at a time. All right? Now, with that said, uh, the other thing we're also going to go and upgrade is our ring. We need Grave Dust and Morning Lily f to upgrade our ring for our gear score, and this is going to increase our spell damage and our overall character level. So we do need quite a lot of Grave Dust, so I'm going to go now to the Forgotten Cemetery and just farm it up. 
Now remember, don't just build a wall and a door. Make sure you make sure to make an airlock because let's say I'm running from like four dudes are trying to gank me. I'm running to the road. I'm running to my base. I open the door and they get in. Well, now they're into the rest of the compound, right? Which we don't want. So again, the airlock prevents them from doing that. And of course, if a player gets stuck in here and they have no way to blast out, they, they're forced to uh, use unstuck. And uh, <laughs> there you go. So uh, again, make sure you airlock everything. Now, a few things to note while farming the graveyard. If you're on a full loot PvP server, this is a horrible place to be caught because there are lots of walls, lots of dead ends, lots of just ways to be cornered. It's a very dangerous and hard to see area too. Um, so what I recommend is if you come in here on a PvP server, just loot these crates and leave. Don't try to smash every little jar and every little plant because eventually a gank group of like 10 people are going to roll up on you and kill you. Now, while you're here, you want to kill the blue-looking plants for Morning Lily, that's very important, and smash every jar you can, every lamp, just every destructible object in this cemetery, because they can all drop uh, the grave uh, item that we're looking for, I forget exactly what it's called at the moment, but you definitely want to come and pick it up, and the cemeteries are, they're very shaded, so don't worry, you can come here during the day, it's not a big deal. And uh, again, just smash every single thing that you can. Jars, kill every mob that you come across because they have a chance to drop it as well. And this will take some time. This is going to be one of the slower farms that you're currently going to have in the game. But with that said, you'll be able to eventually get that ring upgraded and you will get uh, the stone coffin put down. And once you have it, it's completely worth it. And it only gets easier to farm from there. Now, uh, if you have the proper DPS setup, which is the copper sword, uh, these mobs will be pretty easy because you can just AoE cleave them down. You'll have a self-heal, you'll have a counter, which will allow you to, again, AoE and self-heal. You'll also have Chaos Bolt so that you can hurt the higher level mobs here. These guys are level 34, and again, they do hurt. They just chunk me for half my HP. But uh, as long as you dodge and as long as you use your counter properly, they can't technically hurt you. And as long as you use your abilities, you will be able to DPS them down fairly quickly. And there we go, there's some Grave Dust, got it from that guy there. Uh, again, these are harder mobs, but uh, again, we, we just out DPS them, so it's not a big deal. Just make sure you're not caught by other players while you're out here doing this. Now, there is one other way uh, for you to be able to get to the uh, Grave Dust, and that is if you defeat Nicholas the Fallen here, you'll unlock the ability to build a tomb in your castle, which will summon ghouls, and those guys almost always drop one. And... Uh, Again, he's level 37. You're not going to be 37 until you massively upgrade your gear, and that's quite the grind for now. You can solo him if you're good at the game. On a full loot PvP server, you'll just get rolled on. Uh, if you see people doing him, just run up and suck the blood out. You know, <laughs> It might be worth the, the gear sacrifice, but other than that, the, uh, the only surefire way to get... Uh, I keep forgetting the name. Grave Dust here is to open these containers, kill the mobs, and basically just the slow and sure way... So I'm going to open these containers here. Let's see how many we get. We got one there. And uh, let's see. None none in that one. But we did get a, uh, a book. And that's going to make researching easier later. But other than that, just killing these priests. Just killing the high level boss mobs. That's really the only way to do it. I also highly recommend seeking cover from these guys. Because they shoot very hard to dodge spells. So ducking behind the terrain is very, very helpful in between your cooldowns. Basically, play this segment like you would like a, a tactical shooter, I suppose, right? Like shoot them and then take cover so that they can't shoot you back. And they're going to continuously summon things on you. Uh, but hey, you can technically outgear this, but if you take too many hits, you will lose HP very, very fast, which can make this a, a very risky area to beat in. But these guys, they do, they do drop the grave, grave moss, gravestone, whatever it's called. Again, I keep forgetting. But I'm actually going to retreat here just a bit, pop off some heals, because I don't want to get one-shotted by this guy. And anytime he's starting to cast, I'm just going to, again, duck behind cover here. And I have rats. You know, I can always eat rats for more blood. You see that I'm low on blood. Just eat a rat. You're fine. That's what the rats are for. Uh, you can also juice the rats into potions. And uh, again, we, can, we also have other ways to heal with our dodge and attack and our counter, which I failed to cast properly there, but... Uh, 
There we go. He he didn't drop one. It, again, it's all RNG. You just gotta hope for the best. Just smash all the things here, and uh, you'll eventually get enough. Like, right now, I have enough to make the stone coffin. So, if I was on a full loot server, I would return to base, because it's very valuable that I secure that, okay? Whereas, uh, on this server, I can continue farming. It's not a big deal. I'm out of combat, so I can heal back to full and continue grinding mobs until I have enough for both the stone coffin and the ring upgrade. By the way, if you're ever out in the world and you mouse over, you know, units, you can see that their their blood quality. This guy... 100% rogue blood. You definitely want to make a pit stop and pick that guy up. If you can't, if you're in a PvP server and you have 100% rogue, you're a monster. You're you're just going to be able to kill entire groups of players. So obviously, I'm going to pick this guy up. Make sure you don't hurt him. You can unequip your weapon and slap him if you don't want to deal too much damage to him. And there we go. 100% rogue. Check this out. Look at the power we're about to inherit from this guy. All right. So, <laughs> boosts all above by 30%, 50% chance on crit to expose armor, increases damage, reduce cooldown on travel skills, crit strike on the next after using a travel skill, that's a dodge, so that's a crit, see how it crits, oh man, this thing is, at, it makes you insane, we are, this is blood that you don't want to waste, okay, don't eat someone else, try not to use your blood for healing, <laughs> we have 10 liters of this, and we don't want to make it, we don't want to use, like, uh, bring it to waste. Now, with this blood, maybe, maybe I could take on Tristan the Vampire Hunter and save for the next step, okay? Because the ne one of the next steps is you need to upgrade your blood. And I don't mean your blood, but the blood essence, you need a greater blood essence. And there's uh, two ways to go about it. You can get four of those really hard to find hearts, which I have three right now, or we can kill Tristan and we can turn 200 of these blood essences into a greater essence, which is far, far easier to do. But this guy is a skull level mob. I think he's like level 38 to 42, I forget. I don't think I would be able to take him and I would end up losing my rogue blood. But hey, uh, let's, like, I hit him for 9, 10. And uh, I'm, I'm slashing for 7. I'm barely denting this dude's health. He, this, this is not a fight I can win. And he is very painful. Uh, he <laughs> burns me for 12, so it's best if I just run from him. It's a waste of my life bar to even bother trying. Even though I have all night to fight him, and yes, technically if I perfectly played it, did perfect dodges and blocks, I could take him on. Another way is to possibly lure him to like a stone golem or some trents, and hopefully they would help, but he ends up killing them too. And we don't really want to lose a stone golem if it helps us farm. So, again, if you have a group of, pl of people, you can take on Tristan and, and save on the next few steps, or just do it the long way if you're a solo player like me. Alright, so let's get those upgrades. We're going to do this, the Grave Digger Ring, and while that's building, we are going to construct a stone coffin, which we need stone brick for. That's fine, we got these grinders running 24-7, and that, you have to put it on stone ground, you can't put it on the dirt. So, in order to do that, you're going to have to, well, build some stone flooring, so go to castle, and go to floors, and we're just gonna plop down some stone floors right there, that's a nice little area for our coffin, and we're gonna just go ahead and line it up nicely right there, and then we're gonna bind to it. So, there we go. And that's going to complete the next quest for us. And then after that, it's going to have us do, as soon as the thing UI loads, hello UI, there we go. All right, next quest is Dominating Presence. This is making a servant coffin. This is an extremely time, this is going to take most of your day. And even after you do this quest, the next step will take another significant chunk of your day. All right, so you're going to go to production and dominance, and here it is. You need copper ingots, plank. That's easy. The greater blood essence, okay? Again, to make a greater blood essence, okay, you're going to need, well, the blood press. So let's go ahead and grab some planks and some stone real quick. I didn't mean to spin. All right, there's some planks, and then go ahead and just, just some regular stone. You don't need the fancy stone bricks, so we're just going to grab a pile there. And we're going to make a little blood pump, a little blood press, a little blood juicy machine. And, uh, hello? Game? Okay, there we go. So, in order to craft... Well, wrong. Wrong bench. Oh, I... I, sp I don't have it... <laughs> I don't have it the correct way. There we go. We gotta face it towards us, okay? There we go. Here's the blood press. Alright, so you need four of these exquisite hearts to make a primal, but you need unsullied heart. That's the one that we're after. Four of those will make one greater blood essence, okay? You only get these from large bears, level 28 and higher mobs, extremely rare. 
or you gotta kill bosses over and over and over. I've been killing bosses off camera for quite a, a while now, okay? And in my main stash, that's where I keep them, I only have three of these hearts, so I still need one more. The alternative, like I said, is to go kill Tristan the Vampire Hunter, and that's going to unlock this recipe, where you can t take 200 blood essences and get a greater blood essence. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the feed for a bit and go farm another heart, and I'll be right back. By the way, for those that just didn't catch it earlier, make sure that you also fully stonewall off your uh, castle heart and put a reinforced door on it. Because if you don't, once someone unlocks bat form, they can just fly above your base, land on your castle heart, and delete all everything you own. They just land on that heart, they swing away at it for a little bit, they smash it down, everything you've worked so hard for goes poof and they have all of your loot and your entire land and your borders are gone. So you absolutely have to make sure that this is walled off so that doesn't happen. Also, if you're running two bases and you want to be able to spawn at your wooden coffin, Make sure that whatever base has the stone coffin that you just delete the wooden one out of. If you don't, even if you don't bind to it, it'll bug out and bind it to you anyway, which will just make it harder to access your other base. So go ahead and delete the stone one, or I'm sorry, the wooden one if you have a stone one set up already. Now remember, besides bosses, level 28 mobs and bears can also have a chance to drop the hearts, though it's a little more rare for them to do it. Uh, but still, sometimes they do drop it and it will save you time. Uh, though I do recommend mostly just circling around and farming bosses, which involves the Alpha Wolf, the two Archer Ladies, and uh, I haven't shown it on the video, but uh, like over here, there's a there's like a Lumberjack dude in a camp you can kill. Um, again, the right side of the map has way more boss density than the left side. And the left side is a higher level zone, which we'll need to go to later for more Sulfur and a few other unlocks. That's why I recommend new players start on the right side first. Alright, I've managed to get the fourth heart. And uh, for those that are curious, everything that I've done is so far in the video while taking breaks and goofing off and doing some YouTube work on the side and checking Discord and all sorts of other things. It's been about two real life hours to get to this point. Alright, and if you're rushing this fully focused, uh, you will be able to get there much, much quicker. And if you have just one friend, you can get there in half the time. With four friends, heck, you could be you could be at where I'm at in like 20 minutes. <laughs> it's really that insane. This game is absolutely unfair to solo players versus group players. It's just insane. But anyway, uh, it does not take very long to get here at all. But if this is if you've never played this game, your first day, you might not even get this far on your very first day. I've been looking at like very popular, very well-known streamers with tens of thousands of views, and even they didn't get this far advanced in, in their playthrough on their first, like, 12 hours of the game. It's insane. All right, and here is how this works, okay? I actually need planks real quick. I thought I had planks on me. That's fine. We got plenty of planks. Always having planks. And there we go. This is the servant coffin, and a lot of people like to make separate rooms for this because they like to just fill up a room full of them. Uh, but it's up to you. I'm just going to put it here, just because I'm just educating. I'm not, I don't plan to play a single player server. That's silly, right? So we're going to interact with it. That's going to complete the quest. We're going to hit claim, and that's going to give you a new spell called Dominating Presence, which is in you hold control, and here it is. So this part did confuse a quite a lot of people, and I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, uh, for this we will need to go hurt some humans. So I'm just going to go down here, and uh, we're just going to pretty much beat some people up. Now... You want the strongest person kind of in this group of humans, right? You want a melee human or a ranged human? It's it's really up to you what you want, okay? These shield guys, they're super annoying. So I, I definitely want to, uh, I want one of them to be on my team. Because uh, if someone raids my base or if I send these guys out to kill, these shield guys, uh, they're hard to kill. They're annoying. They have this dumb shield wall. And if you fought an army of these, they're just real annoying, right? So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, this one's nearly dead. We're going to kill him. Okay, so what we're going to do, we wounded him. We're going to go to Dominating Presence now. And you'll see that I have a new spell called Kiss of the Vampire. Well, you're just going to cast it on them, and it's going to drain them. When they hit below 30% HP, you now have them charmed. Because I have him following me, I can't transform into a wolf. And, uh, yeah, so I have to stay in this Dominating Presence. But he is now my ally, he'll fight alongside me, and um, it's basically like having a really crappy party member, right? But we're not done yet, okay? 
Let's see, how much blood do I have? 132, that's fine. You want at least 100 blood essence, okay? Now, uh, if you open and shut a door quickly, he will teleport to you. Okay, this is how you can keep him kind of safe, right? So don't worry about shutting the door on these guys. It's completely fine. Anyway, so we're going to drag him over here to the servant coffin now. And we're going to hit convert. We have 100 of the blood essences. And this also shows you his power. He's got tenacious strength. Okay, blah, blah, blah. He's a mugger. What do we do? We bug people. <laughs> Viva La Dirt League. Okay, so now this is going to take one real life hour and 30 minutes for him to be converted. You could also just kill him if you want, if you don't want to wait, or if you find a better dude. Okay, uh, and then we you can't complete this quest for one hour and 30 minutes real time. Also, to cancel your dominating presence, just push control and then let go, and that'll return you back to normal. Now, like a cooking channel, I do have... Um, a save prepared after this step. Alright, so once the timer is up, you will go to the servant coffin, and then you will click uh, Arise. There'll be a button like, to, to make them alive again, right? And uh, then you'll have this little NPC that'll run around your compound, and they'll kill invaders or attack things. You can also send them off to do things once you build a castle throne. Alright, so here's one now that I've converted. Uh, there's nothing special about the name James. It, that's just the default name it gave them. You can change their names, too. So you walk up, push F, you can change their name. You can change their name once you make them rise out of the coffin. You can give them equipment, rings, all this kind of cool stuff. So that's why we saved our old equipment. Now, this is my first playthrough. And you can see my, my character's head is like wiggling like no. Uh, but <laughs> So I don't have a spare equipment to give them. But if I wanted, I can give them this crossbow. And there you go, it increases his power, right? Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I don't really care about these dudes. Anyway, once you interact with him or her, whatever you've enslaved, or converted, whatever the word is, then you will get put into this quest called the Throne of Command. And what this does is it wants you to build a castle throne so that you can now command uh, those guys and tell them to attack, you know, settlements and stuff like that, right? So to build the throne, you go to dominant or Dominance, and then here's the throne. The throne costs Iron Ingots. Also, it costs four greater blood essence, which was a pain in the ass to get. Now, here's the thing with... The, oh, the server's crashing. You see my character scooting around? It's about to disconnect. <laughs> Any second now. Um, okay, so, Castle Throne. You need iron ingots. How do you get iron? Okay, yeah, there you go. Connection was lost. All right, once you have the throne, you can then sit on your throne, like the badass vampire you are, and it'll open a map here where you can uh, tell your people to attack settlements, you can tell them how long it's going to take. Again, this is real life hours. <laughs> uh, but essentially, these are just like little thralls or laborers from Albion. And they're going to bring you back resources, okay? Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what that system's all about. Now, again, how do you get iron? How do you mine iron? It is a pain in the butt, okay? And let me tell you why it's a pain in the butt. You are going to have to farm loads and loads of paper to get the recipe to unlock... Uh, hold on, let me just show you uh, real quick. I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete the throne. I don't need it anymore. Uh, we're going to go to production and research and research table. There we go. So uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get lots and lots of paper or grind level 30 zones. And you you need to unlock the Merciless Copper Mace recipe, okay? Once you unlock the Merciless Copper Mace recipe, that will allow you to farm iron. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you're going to have to farm lots of iron or farm tier 2 zones for the iron. It it gets it, it gets very troublesome. And, and to even get to the tier 2 zones, to even be able to make a forge, you have to go to a zone here. Uh, this one right here, the Bandit Stronghold. And there you're going to fight an NPC. Now, ignore the levels. This is a hacked save file uh, for YouTube creation purposes. Okay, these aren't the actual mobs proper levels. But there is a boss here. Uh, which will, you'll have to beat, where's he at? He's like a big dude with a shield. Uh, do I not see him? Where is he at? Big guy with a shield. Come on now, where's he at? Come on, where, where are you? Uh, anyway, he is how you unlock the, is it Rufus the Foreman? Uh, the woodwork, no, he's, that's not him. That's a level 20 mob. Come on, where is he at? It's a, it's a dude with a shield. Here he is. Quincy the Bandit King. Okay, this unlocks the smithy. Okay, uh... Yeah, and the recipe to make iron ingots. You have to beat him to be able to make iron ingots. You can't 
you can't smelt them without beating this dude. And to even get to this dude, you also have to go through this long convoluted process where you have to make an alchemy table from, I believe, this guy. Yeah, that he, Clive Firestar, level 30 dude. Uh, he has the alchemy table. This is where you will make minor explosives. You will then take the minor explosives. Um, I could just show you real quick. I'm, I'm just going to fly. I don't have minor explosives. I have bad form, so I can skip it. Uh, again, this is just a kind of hacked save file, so I can make videos quickly and easily and gather as much intel on this game as I can, as fast as I can. But essentially, you have to have explosives to enter the bandit stronghold. All the gates are blocked with a wall, and there's no way around it. You can't hop over walls. I haven't found a way to glitch inside. Um, now, here's the problem. It, this is a big compound, and he's located through a very lot of tight corridors, a lot of choke points. On full loot PvP servers, this is camped constantly. There is always people here because it's whetstone, it's sulfur ore, it's also a great place to farm paper. You have to farm paper to escape tier 1 into tier 2 and to increase your gear score, okay? Uh, to unlock the Merciless set. So, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and just drop in the village here as a bat. So here's the wall, and again, it requires explosives to get into. And then you'll have to go through this level 20 to 30 mob zone... Uh, all the way through it, going to the top of the compound, and looping back around. Let's see if I can go into wolf form here. Uh, it doesn't look like they're gonna let me. I mean, I can kill these dudes in one hit, but... You have to go through a huge <laughs> gauntlet of mobs while fighting other players. It's not fun. This, this is... This is pretty much where, if you're a solo player like me, this is where your fun ends, okay? Um, you're not gonna be able to do this on your first... Maybe your second day. Or if you have friends, you could probably do it on your first day. But like, the, the mobs start to get higher leveled. Um, these are only showing 18 to 20. That is because I have my save file, like, kind of on an easy mode. But they should be 20 to 30 on a, re on a regular official server. Here we go, level 26 on that guy. You go all the way up here, and then you'll fight Quincy the Bandit King. He's level 37, I believe. Or 40, I forget. But you have to take him out. There's... <laughs> You could hop off the side if Ginkers come, okay? But he's really hard to get to um, if you're a solo player. Uh, usually a lot of people will also guard this to be on the lookout for uh, other, like, groups counter-ganking. It's... it sucks, man. Like, But once you kill him, you can safely move on to Iron. And if you get Foundation wiped after learning all this stuff, then you could just go to the Tier 2 zones. You know, quickly get your mace, your copper mace. Not your copper mace, your merciless mace. Uh, and there you go. So, uh, <laughs> that's your first day. That's the fastest possible start for V Rising. I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I know it was kind of a long one, but I wanted to show you in great detail exactly how this works and how you should do it. I'm Soul Benji. Come back tomorrow for another video because I have daily videos on this channel. Uh, possibly two to three videos a day depending on how much I'm playing this and pumping out content and how popular the game ends up becoming. All right, uh, also please leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button because the algorithm won't always show you my videos and it really helps me out. Let's hit 100K, come on now. And finally, if you're financially independent and stable and you want access to private, more personal videos, you can become a channel member. It's $5 a month. It's like being a Twitch sub, but on a cooler website called YouTube instead. And it helps me out tremendously. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for coming to hang out with me today. Let me know what you were doing while you watched this video. Were you eating food? Were you just chilling on a couch? Were you watching it from a cell phone? I want to know. I'm curious. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Take care.